Well, welcome to the Bing Lounge. This is Kink Live at the Bing Lounge. It's presented by our friends at Intel. So here we go. Uh, thank you for coming back. I was here last time when you and uh, John Hyatt were here. That was that was a lot of fun. Well, it was nice nice of you to have us then, and, and uh, likewise, nice of you to have us now. Yeah. Um, release Me was released in uh, February. That's your latest release, and that was your last release on Curb Records. What's you have plans for what's coming up next? Curb, uh, no plans at all. No uh, plans we may just stay all. in Portland indefinitely. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that works really well for us. We'll just have you back. You'll be our house band here at the Bing Lounge. That'd be great. Um, one of your friends, Sean Colvin, is coming in in a couple of weeks, and um, I haven't interviewed her before. You and I have talked a couple of times, and she's got an autobiography that's out right now, and I was reading it, and she and you and I are pretty much the same age within about a year of each other. And she mentions growing up listening to music and what, like her parents had Kingston Trio albums and uh, she listened to the radio. And I remember this too. When we were little, there was a song on the radio called Wolverton Mountain. Do you remember that song? Well, By certainly, yeah. Claude sure. King. Sure. What, what kind of music were you listening to growing up in Texas? Because it's different than what I was listening to in Portland and what she was listening to in North Dakota, probably. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, I think maybe maybe more of a difference between uh, what Sean was listening to in North Dakota, but uh, you know, I grew up in the Houston area, and okay. so that's it's always been a big media market. And of course, we had you know mainstream pop music and mainstream rock and roll and and country music. And, but but and so uh, I listened to to all that. Uh, you know, I grew up around my older cousins. So I was subjected to their musical taste. And I do remember when uh, Wolverton Mountain was on the radio, and my cousin Burke used to sing it uh, a lot uh, as he taught me to play pool uh, when I was a, a boy. And, and, uh, but, uh, you know, so I first heard, you know, when Long Tall Texan was a, was a hit on the radio, that's how I heard it. And, uh, you know, years later, uh, got to record it. Um, but, but listen, you know, I was a big fan of, of the Beatles and, right. and, you know, listen to pop, I have monkeys, a... still have my monkeys LPs. Yeah. <laughs> I have some Herb Alpert and Tijuana Brass stuff. Well, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So do you remember a, a moment or a group or a song or something that really just kind of turned the switch for you when you were just like, that's what I want to do? Oh gosh. You know, I've always enjoyed playing and singing and, uh, uh, I went to a small Lutheran school, and music was a part of every day. We sang hymns, certainly, but but uh, we also had a chance at the end of the school year. Uh, every year, there was a, a performance that uh, we'd do for the parents, and and um, uh, you know, kind of all the grades. And and uh, I got to you know do my first solo song in the in the second grade, and uh, and you know, I I knew that I liked it. Did you do church choir too? Did church? You bet. Yeah. Did church choir? Yeah. So that's where I got my. That's where it started for me. And then the Beatles, of course, Beyond and Sullivan. It was like, oh, okay, here well, we go. Exactly. Now we're going somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, what what, what time, did you What did you sing in the in the choir? What? Where uh, were you? Well, back then I was a soprano. Soprano. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey. No, I just remember how proud changed. I was when I became an alto. Yeah, I was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that moment. I had that moment too. <laughs> then I ended up as a baritone in high school for the, the music <laughs> man. Did the music man? Oh, so. nice. Um, last time you were here, we talked about Robert Altman, and you've been able to hang out with some people that are just, I, I, I admire you because you're able to hang out with some of these people. And one of those people that I didn't get to ask you about last time was Hunter Thompson. What? Tell me about how you met and what your relationship was like with Hunter. You know, I, I, I met uh, uh, Hunter from playing in Colorado, playing in, in Aspen. And he, uh, he had graciously included me uh, in in one of his books, in, in uh, something he listed as the honor roll. The honor roll, that was and, yeah. And uh, and he had and the cowboy junkies uh, uh, were on, and and I and I was just shocked, shocked and amazed. And so uh, I was introduced by a, a mutual friend, a, a really fine writer named Robert Draper, and uh, who had had uh, done some writing about Hunter, and and uh, uh, Robert introduced us at at. Uh, uh, after a show that we did uh, okay. up in the Aspen area, we I remember uh, we were playing the church song, and Hunter had made his way uh, right down front, and he was, uh, uh, you know, very enthusiastic as he he could be, <laughs> and he was you know sort of you know uh, waving his fist in the air as we were doing the church song, saying "crush them, crush them like dogs." <laughs> You wouldn't expect anything less from him, right? Exactly. He, you know, he was just an amazingly, uh, well, to get to know him, you know, uh, personally, uh, just so perceptive and so sensitive, you know, so aware of every nuance uh, go, go, uh, going on around him. I mean, just really incredible. 
Right. Well, let's hear some music. This would be great. So uh, Lyle Levitt in the Bing Lounge. Thank you so much. Thank you.